Hi everyone, Neuralnar here. It's getting cold outside, it's getting to be winter time, and I have underground sprinklers. And that means that I need to winterize them. And I have everything that I need to do that job already in my basement. I don't even have to go outside to do it. It really is pretty easy, and I'm going to show you how I clean out my sprinklers today. Now, there seems to be a lot of poor information out there on the internet, I've noticed, when looking up how to do this. I've been doing it this way for a number of years, it works just fine. And if you look at, for example, the sprinkler manufacturers themselves, uh, Orbit, for example, or Rainbird, uh, this basic procedure is what they say to use. However, the majority of information out there is written either by novices who really don't know what they're doing or by uh, lawn services who want your money. So the lawn services will say that if you try to do it yourself, you'll probably end up destroying your sprinkler system. You'll end up with a sprinkler head popping out of the ground, hitting you in the eye. You'll go blind, your wife will leave you, you'll lose your house, get addicted to heroin, and end up eaten by stray dogs OD'd behind a dumpster somewhere. Well, I hardly ever end up being OD'd behind a dumpster, and I've never been eaten by stray dogs. So, that's all a bunch of BS. This really is a pretty simple procedure, and pretty much anybody can do this at home. And the other group of people says that you need some sort of CFM per gallon per hour of water that your sprinkler system uses, or some equation like that. Uh, there is no real equation like that, and you need a lot of CFM to get the job done. I don't care what anyone says about getting the job done with a 5 CFM air compressor, it doesn't work that way. You need at least 50 CFM, even for mine. And my sprinkler system is pretty small. It's just three zones, the zones aren't all that big, and uh, you need a lot of airflow. But you can get that without having a large air compressor. So, as I said, I have everything that I need to get this job done already in my basement. So, let's go down there and take a look at it. But before we do, I want to mention that what I'm talking about here is for sprinkler systems that do not have automatic drain valves or manual drain valves. Now, even if you do have automatic drain valves, I would recommend blowing it out with compressed air because they often fail and you end up with a broken sprinkler system. Uh, but uh, I don't have either of those and it was not installed such that it drains on its own. So, I need to blow it out with compressed air. Here I am in my basement, and I have everything that I need to do the job down here. This is the air compressor that I plan on using. I've used this one the last number of years for this job, and it works just fine. It's a small little 5 gallon tank, I believe, um, so it's very portable. Normally this is in my garage, I just hold it down the steps, it's easy to carry. And uh, I could do this outside, but uh, I'll explain why I'm doing it down here in a little bit. The CFM of this particular compressor is 4 or 5, I forget, uh, it doesn't really matter. You'll never be able to get the CFM you need to clean out a line on a 110 or really even a 220 volt um, appliance. You need one of those diesel tow behind units that they use for construction purposes and such. Um, I don't have one of those and you don't need one. This just takes a lot more time. The other ones, the uh, high CFM, 50 to 100 CFM uh, diesel air compressors, those will uh, clean out your line and you can get the job done in 5 minutes or so. This will take me a few hours, that's the trade-off, but it's free, I already have it, and I have everything that I need to do the job. Now, part of the reason why you need a high CFM is because sprinkler lines don't flow downhill, they flow up and downhill and every other which way. When they're buried, they end up with little pockets and low spots in them, even if they do generally flow downhill, you'll still end up with little low spots, and you need enough air to force that water out all the way to a sprinkler head at one end or the other. So you need a, a very high CFM. Uh, but anyway, what matters here is the tank. This is only 5 gallon tank, not enough. So what I have instead is this propane tank. I forget if it's a 60 pound or 100 pound propane tank, but it's about 4 feet high, and uh, I use this for auxiliary air. And it works great. Now you don't necessarily need to have a propane tank to do this. Uh, they're great sources of free tanks, but you can also get the job done with a large upright air compressor. Either way works. This is my method because I got this tank for free, and I already have this air compressor. You also need a few miscellaneous fittings. I have a washing machine hose here and a, a Y. Uh, this hooks up to my air compressor that I put together. But uh, in any case, let's hook this whole thing up, and uh, I'll show you how it works. The first thing to note is where I'm hooking this up to my sprinkler system. Now, the way you're supposed to do this is to connect it to the outside drain valve after the backflow preventer. Uh, technically, the way I'm doing it here is against code, but it's just more convenient for me to do it from the inside. 
Uh, the reason that you're required to hook it up on the other side of the backflow pre flow preventer is to avoid contaminating drinking water. Um, other people will claim that it's to protect the backflow preventer. That's BS. It, it handles it just fine. In fact, it's good for it to be cleaned out this way. Uh, but uh, So technically it's against uh, city regulations, but I do it this way anyway just because it's convenient. And I know that it's safe for me. This is the uh, shutoff to my sprinkler system. I have that off. This is where I'm going to be injecting the air. I have this on right now. So this is open to my sprinkler system. And uh, when I fire this system back up next spring, I'll open that valve and put a few thousand gallons of water through this line so it will be very clean. won't have to worry about contamination at all. This is just a catch bucket to catch drips and whatnot. But you somehow need to connect your air up to here. There's a couple different ways to do that. On the end of this adapter here, I have what you can purchase. This connects two garden hoses together, um, screwed onto this drain valve. You can use something like that to connect garden hoses to it, or there's an easier way. I have here a washing machine hose. It has two of these ends on it, which makes it really easy to connect up. So, <clears throat> so I'll just connect that up to here. And this is my auxiliary tank. It happens to be a propane tank. One note, if you're going to convert an old propane tank, be very careful because when they're full of propane fumes, they are explosive. So make sure that you clean them out in a safe manner. Um, okay. So my tank is now connected up to my sprinkler system. And now I need to connect compressed air up to the tank. And to do that, I put together this little thing. It's just a standard boiler drain with a quarter inch uh, NPT uh, industrial air coupler on it. And uh, you can put together whatever you think will work at the hardware store. This whole assembly probably cost me 10 bucks or something, and this will be the fourth year or something that I've used it, so it's definitely paid for itself. I'll just thread this thing onto here. Now all I have to do is connect my air compressor chuck to that. there we go. It's all connected up and I'm ready to clean up my sprinklers. Now all of these valves are closed right now. All of the valves in my setup are closed right now, including my air compressor valve. Now to do this you do need a functional pressure regulator. Sprinkler systems can only handle water pressure and I would recommend never going above 60 psi in terms of air, or you can blow things up. Also keep in mind that particular components such as PVC become shrapnel if they should fail and explode. Um, it's very different than filling them with water, so if you're going to be working around the outside of your v of your house that has uh, PVC like mine does, you probably want to wear safety goggles um, since it can be kind of dangerous. You should never put uh, air into a PVC system in general, but uh, I'd make an exception for this one case. In any case, so your pressure regulator, crank that up to about 60 psi. So I'm going to open this up. Alright, there we go. It is at 60. Now it's very important that you do this with all of the valves closed. Because pressure regulators in general will uh, slowly allow pressure to build up more and more, uh, depending on the flow level. So if you adjust it when there's no flow at all, you know that this is the maximum it will ever get to. And now, we'll go over here to this tank and uh, start opening up the valves. So I still have my output valve closed. Let's open that up. The tank, make sure that's open. And you'll want a lot of airflow here, so you want to make sure that all the valves are fully open. Open up this one. And now I'll let my air compressor air into this tank and into the uh, line going to my sprinkler system. When I do that, this tank will uh, take quite a while to fill. It takes my air compressor over here uh, somewhere between 5 and 10 minutes to fill this tank to uh, 60 psi, and that tank over there to 125 psi. 
So we'll open this up and uh, let it all fill up. Five to ten minutes later and I have this 20-25 gallon tank, something like that, filled with 60 psi of air. And I have my air compressor over here with a five gallon tank filled to 125. When I start emptying this tank, the air compressor tank will empty into it and help augment it somewhat at least. And of course then the air compressor will turn on as well once it gets below 80 psi or so. But next thing to do is to turn on the sprinkler system to let the air flow through. There's two ways to do that. You can use the manual valves outside in your control box, or you can just do it at your control panel. And I pretty well run out of air. So, it's time to go refill the tank. Another 10 minutes or so has gone by, and I have my tank all pumped up. This one to 60 psi again. This time it took a little bit longer than before because the entire line, sprinkler line, up to the valve box is now pressurized. And this is why you want to be very careful that you only put in uh, 60 psi at the most. Uh, 50 is probably safer because you could very easily cause damage to some component that way. But uh, it does give me an additional 5 gallons or so of uh, volume. It's not insignificant running a 1 inch pipe 40 feet or so. There's a lot of volume in that. So it's time to blow out that uh, zone one more time, but before I do I want to make a couple of notes. Now that there's no water in the system, there's no dampening for those sprinkler heads to turn on. That means that as soon as I turn on the pressure air will rush in and those sprinkler heads will fire up like little torpedoes. That's really hard on them. So you might want to reduce the pressure at this point to something less than 60, uh, maybe 40 psi or so just to be easier on your sprinkler system. But uh, I know that mine can handle it because I've done this before so I'm just going to leave it at 60. <clears throat> Another thing to watch is your air compressor. A lot of air compressors don't like running for three hours continuously like I usually have mine running. It's only shut off now because I'm filming. Normally I don't ever let it shut off. This is a cast iron oil air compressor. And uh, it will run continuously and it'll be very happy doing so. Not all of them will, so make sure you don't overheat your compressor. Anyway, it's getting dark outside and uh, I want to show you the second blowout before, uh, before it gets too dark to film it. Now, my other two zones are quite a bit more difficult to clean out. Uh, this one I think I can get done with just two blowouts. The other ones might take uh, five or six, so that's why this process takes a while. But to do it right, you do need large tanks and some patience. Or just hire the lawn service to do it for you, but I'm too cheap to do that, so this is my method.
Alright, well after seeing it the second time, apparently I need to do it one more time to make sure it's cleaned out properly, but after that I'll move on to the other zones. In any case, this is how I clean out my sprinkler systems every year, and it works well for me. Thanks for watching.